Hi everybody, it's Starla with Starla's Creative Teaching Tips. This is pocket lesson number five, and we are going to talk about bone strength and what happens when they get broken. So, here we go. You guys ready? All right, so first of all, we we're talking about that we have two skeletons. That's what I left with you, left this with you last time. So here we go. The first skeleton you see is an axial skeleton. You see it? Yeah, that's our skull or cranium our thoracic cage, yeah, okay, and then our vertebral column. Now that's a different skeleton than the one we've been talking about, and I know a lot of you out there, you think we only have one, and that's because of Halloween, because when we were, we were little kids, we're like, oh, I'm gonna be a skeleton for Halloween, because we think the whole thing, but there's two. So this is axial skeleton, which we'll talk about in another pocket lesson. The one we've been talking about is this guy right here. Yeah, he's your appendages, which you know is the appendicular skeleton, okay? Now, I don't care if you're in second grade or if you're in high school, it's the appendicular skeleton. Why? Because these are appendages, and what's their job? Is to move us. So it doesn't matter what grade level you are, that's easy to learn, right? Okay, so here we go. Now, we did the bones of the arm, and we've done the bones of the leg. So let's talk about what it's made out of, okay? So your appendicular skeleton are made out of long bones, see how long they are? And they're made out of short, chunky bones, called short bones. Cool, huh? All right? Now, this, if we're gonna move around, sometimes we fall down. Well, we walk on our back legs here, so here we go. When we walk and our foot hits the ground, energy goes up our leg and the weight from all of this up above goes down the leg. So how in the world do these long bones not just fold in half? How are they so strong when we jump up and down and rebound a basketball or we do a high jump? How in the world do they not break? Well, let's find out, okay? It's really simple. First of all, recognize this structure right there? It's a triangle. That's right, okay. A triangle is the strongest geometric structure. You see them everywhere. Ready? So if I put pressure this way, it has two struts holding it, keeping it strong. Or if I push this way, yeah. So a triangle is strong in any direction it receives pressure. Look at your rooftop. Your rooftop is what? A triangle. When you see a building going up, a tall building, how do they arrange the beams? They crisscross them. What do you see? A triangle. Bones are smart, and that's what they do also. All right, so for example, these short bones like this, and inside the ends of the long bones, they have what's called spongy bone. Take a look at that. This is where the tendon grabs a hold of the bone. These cool little tendons that grow in there called Sharpie's fibers. They're so cool. They're like roots of a tree and they grow in there. Do y'all see that spongy bone? Now, it looks like it would be soft, but it's not, okay? And so what it looks like is this. You see? This is a spongy bone. All right, now, this is compact bone. All bones have compact bone around the outside of them. But inside, you see these little struts? Those are called trabiculae. Isn't that a cool word? It almost makes your mouth feel good to say it. Trabiculae, you almost want to sing it. In between, now take a look. Do you see that the trabiculae have triangles? They're arranged in triangles. Therefore, even though it's a short bone, it can handle a lot of pressure. It's hard to break a carpal. It's hard to break the tarsals in your feet, okay? A hard because they are so strong because of those trabiculae arranged in triangles. Neat, huh? Okay, now you see the red in between? Neat trick. Anytime you see spongy bone, red bone marrow. I know, you're thinking, wait, we're talking about bones. But see, systems are interrelated. Spongy bone makes all of your blood. That is rocking cool, isn't it? Okay, all right, let's go on. Now, now that we know it's a triangle, all right, here we go. So, let's just take a look at this femur, okay? Look at the bottom of it. It's wide at the bottom, and then it narrows. Are you seeing what I see? Are you seeing the triangle? That's right, that's the top of your knee makes a triangle, see? Okay, excellent. Okay, now watch this. Look at the top 
of the tibia. Yeah. Oh, what do you see? Flat top, narrow, oh, another triangle. So your knee is actually two triangles sitting on top of each other. Okay? So, of course, why wouldn't we do that? Because that's where most of your stress and weight hit. Yeah. Okay, now here's what's kind of neat. We're talking about the knee. What happens if I fall down? See how the bottom of the femur and the top of the tibia open up? Oh my gosh, what would happen if that boom hit the floor if you fell down? That would hurt really bad. So here's what's neat. You see one of the short bones here? You know this is your kneecap. Yeah, there you go, the patella. The patella job is not weight bearing. It's the only short bone in your body that's not for weight bearing. It's for protection. Yeah, it sits right here and protects the bottom of the femur and the tibia when it opens up. That's its job and it's suspended in a bunch of tendons and ligaments, so it's called a sesamoid bone. Now, the reason why anatomy is called a sesamoid bone is because it's shaped like a sesame seed. I know, isn't that brilliant? So anatomy and body systems aren't hard because a lot of times they just name it over common things, okay? All right, so that's the job of your patella, a little protection. What do you notice about its shape? Hmm, what are we seeing? Triangles. It's amazing. Oh, let's do the scapula real quick. Remember the scapula scoops? Remember that? What do you see? Look at that. Triangles. Triangles. So a thin bone like this, don't let it trick you. It's not weak at all. It's very strong because it gets strength by using physics of a triangle. Okay, now let's go back to that femur and tibia. Oh, let's throw in the humerus. Look at the bottom of that funny humerus. Flat. Oh, oh, do you see it already? triangle. So when you land, you've got a triangle to take the stress on that. Yeah, it's pretty cool, okay? Now, watch this. Let's look at this femur. Okay, now this is the front of it, which is called the anterior, okay? It's flat. Now look here. This is known for my high school students. This is the diaphysis, okay? For my junior high and elementary, just knows this is the shaft. Now, that doesn't mean you can't learn diaphysis. You can if you want. Bonus points, right? Okay, what do you notice? If I turn this around, do you see how it's angled in? That's right. The whole entire shaft or diaphysis is a triangle. That keeps, so stress can come from down, weight down, stress up from walking. It keeps this bone from folding in half. It is super strong going up and down. It can handle all kinds of weight up and down. All right, now let's look at that. I'm gonna draw that for you, okay? So there's the bottom of our femur. There's that triangle. And then this, if I cut this bone in half, whoosh, this is what it looks like. So here's the triangle of that femur. So here's the front, and it angles to the back. Everybody good? Let's throw in the tibia. All right, I'm going to do it in red. I live in Lubbock, Texas. We got red raiders. Okay, so we're going with black and red. Okay, here we go. Now, as I draw this, Okay, here's our knee. See it? Here's the femur. Here's the tibia. See the two triangles stacked on each other? Then we put those two rubbery meniscus in there to keep the bones, give a little extra shock absorber. Okay, all right, now look at this. This is the tibia. The red is the tibia. Now look at its shaft. It's flat in the back and it angles towards the front. Now go ahead and take your, your hand and run it down the front of your shin and you're feeling that crest. Remember how we talked about that? Okay, all right, so you see the angle? Look, there's the triangle. Angles like this, flat in the back. So these two bones have opposite triangles, okay? So what does that mean? The femur's triangle points to the back and the tibia's triangle points to the front. What it means is this is that when you step down and the weight goes down and the energy comes up, see NRG, that's my abbreviation for energy, NRG stays right in the center of those bones. And so they are super, super strong. It travels up the bone, straight up and down, okay? Isn't that awesome? So when you jump up and down and you land, you don't have to worry about these long bones buckling. Okay, because why? They're super strong. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, because of the triangles. Okay, now, they can be broken. 
Okay, so just like this pencil. See this pencil, you guys are familiar with it. Look, I cannot break that pencil. If I hit that straight down, the energy travels up and down the pencil. Cool, huh? Okay. But what happens if energy comes in from the side? Okay, let's say I plant my foot, okay, in football, and somebody's helmet lands right here, and that's right. Did you see how quick that broke? That's right. Long bones are built to carry energy up and down, but they are not built to take energy from the side. Yeah, now, it'd be hard to break a tibia on the crest because that's the tip of the triangle, but come in from the side, yeah, it can snap it pretty good. Okay, so take a look. There you go, right here. Now that is called a simple fracture. It's just snapped, okay? If it's at an angle, it's an oblique, but it's a simple fracture, all right? What happens though if the person breaks it and then they get up and step on it and these bones now are super sharp and it, it cuts through the muscle and out through the skin. That is called a compound fracture because this now the bone has broke the skin okay now there's a lot of blood vessels in here bones even though they don't look very alive they're loaded with nerves and blood vessels so it hurts to break a bone so we have simple and we have compound okay everybody good if we actually have twisted those bones across it would go at an angle and that's called a spiral fracture all right what happens if it was an impact, so it broke it, and then the two bones were jammed together. That's exactly what it's called, is an impact fracture. Yeah, okay. All right, now, sometimes bones are hit so hard that they break up into little bitty pieces. You see pieces of bone everywhere, all right? And those are called comminuted fractures. Now, here's my trick. Long time ago, Russia used to be called the USSR. It was a huge communist country, and then it broke up into a bunch of little countries. Get it? Communuted. The communist countries broke up into tiny pieces. So that was my trick. You can use it if it works for you, okay? Now, those of you that are really young, like you're under the age of 10, okay, a lot of your bones are still high on garbage. So sometimes if you fall accidentally, maybe out of a tree or something, and you land and your bones go crooked, okay, the energy goes sideways, instead of landing straight up and down, like that, then what happens is, because your bones are really kind of rubbery with that hyaline cartilage, like we talked about last time, how it covers the ends of bones, you'll break part of it, okay, but it's still stuck together, and that's called a green stick fracture, okay? That's very common in children, or it's called a green stick, because if you ever try to pull a branch off a tree and it's still living and it's still kind of rubbery and you have to pull it off, that's a green stick. That's where they got that from. Isn't that neat? Okay, now that's not all the fractures there are, but those are the simple ones we have. We have simple ones, okay, simple fracture, compound, impact, comminuted, spiral, and green stick. And those are enough for you to start with. Okay, now after this video, I'm going to post some pictures of some fractures and see if you can figure out what they are. All right? I hope you had a great time today. I have a great time with you. This lesson, you can find it under www.starlessteachtips.com, Stars Notes, the Skeletal Module. All right? You guys have an absolutely wonderful day. It's snowing here. I know. Get out of town in Lubbock, Texas on April. We got a little bit of snow. It's kind of nice. All right? And then we have 80 on Thursday. So, hey, on Thursday, new wildflowers. Two new wildflowers. They're starting to bloom like crazy. I love it. Have a great day. Be kind. Make a positive difference in the world. Talk to you Thursday. Bye-bye.